Hello, welcome to Fujoshi Trash Talk, a subsidiary of Annie Bro's Creative Extended Universe. My name is Stacy. You may know me on the internet as Sailor Spaz. I have with me today Tara. Hello. And Jen. Hi. We are starting this podcast under the Annie Bros, all about Fujoshi stuff. So how did this come about? Well, we have been friends with the Annie Bros for a number of years. First, we met them at conventions. Uh, we went to their Jeopardy panel at KumoriCon. And we, after that, we started playing their Jeopardy game. After that, we started winning their Jeopardy game. And they kicked us out for winning too many games. <laughs> so then we moved on to helping them make the games. And then that eventually worked up to hanging out outside of the cons and even traveling to Japan together. So knowing that they had a long running podcast, we also wanted to get in on this action. But we thought, hey, we can expand it to other subjects that the core bros might not be interested in. And that's where we come in. Us filthy Fujoshi trash want to use this podcast to talk about topics that interest us and our fellow Fujo sisters. Today, some of you may be new to the subject and not sure what we even mean by calling ourselves Fujoshi or saying that we enjoy BL slash yaoi slash slash. So we'll first briefly go over some common terms. Then we'll share with you our own own sordid personal histories, the dark tales of how we ended up like this. So first we'll go over the term that is used in the title of this podcast, Fujoshi. This is a Japanese term that uses the characters for rotten and female. Basically, it refers to women who enjoy BL and yaoi. What are those? Well, BL stands for boys love. It's about male-male relationships. Despite the name, it does not necessarily mean young boys, but can also be adult men. And a note, do not search for boys love in English. You will regret it. <laughs> uh, this is speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, unfortunately. Probably on some FBI list now, I don't know. <laughs> but boys' love is typically made by women for a female audience. In Japan, it's used as a catch-all term for both canon and non-canon things, such as say, you know, shows that are actually about boys in love, or just things where fans have taken two characters and made, uh, made them in love in their fan works. Boys' love has come to be the catch-all term that replaces other words that have fallen out of usage in Japan, such as as shonen I and June. Next is yaoi. In English, this is used as a catch-all term, but this is not true in Japan. It seems that each culture is kind of disguising what they're into by the Japanese using an English term, the English using a Japanese term. In Japan, yaoi refers mainly to fan works such as doujinshi and not mainstream things that would be called BL over there. The term is an acronym for the phrase yamanashi, ochinashi, iminashi. This means no peak, no point, no meaning. Basically, denoting that there's no grand delusions of producing high art, it's just smut. <laughs> kind of similar to the term PWP used in English fanfics, which is plot. What plot? There's also a joke alternative of what yaoi stands for, which is yamete o shiri ga itai, which is stop that, my <laughs> butt hurts. <laughs> As for the English side of fandom, terms such as slash are used to refer to male-male pairings, though that term can also be used for female-female as well. The name comes from the fact that a slash is used to separate characters' names. In the earlier 70s, an example that was common at that time was Kirk slash Spock. And another English term you may hear is ships, which is simply a shortened version of the word relationship. This is a versatile word that can be used as a noun, like say, these are my ships, I love them, rah! Or you can use it as a verb as, oh man, I totally ship that. Ships can be denoted, as mentioned before, with a slash between the names. In Japan, they commonly may use the letter X instead, or they may have a fused version of the two characters' names, much like the way Hollywood always comes up with cutesy couple names for celebrities, like Brangelina. Sorry, I'm old and out of touch, and I don't know more current examples. <laughs> but you get the idea. English ship names can be quite loose in how they're combined, but Japan has a pretty strictly used formula, usually making ship names with four syllables, and they'll be ordered by the top or semi's name first, and then the uke bottom's name second. There'll be two syllables from each name. An example is in Dragon Ball, and I'm going to use that because that's what I like. <laughs> 
In Japanese, Goku's name consists of three syllables, so sometimes his ships use the ku portion of the name, but they may also use Kakarot, his original Saiyan name. So you may get ships with names like Kaka Veggie, which is Kakarot and Vegeta. Or you can get even weird stuff like Kakaku, where he is shipped with himself in different forms. Yamada! Thanks, Tara, on the soundboard. <laughs> Coming in with the Dragon Ball reference. <laughs> So now that you know what a Fujoshi is and what we like, we'll tell you a bit about ourselves and how we came to be Fujoshi. So why don't you get us started, Jen, with telling us your tale? So I guess I first got into Fujoshi and stuff and kind of started identifying as Fujoshi in 2006, 2007, when I started learning Japanese. It was around that time that a friend of mine who was learning Japanese and I was like, oh my goodness, you're learning Japanese, I want to learn that too. And she kind of introduced me to the world of anime and manga and Japanese and, of course, BL. And she lent me, like, CDs with Naruto and Gravitation and Junja Romantica and Fake, sort of all burned onto CDs. So I watched all of those old anime that way, and that's kind of what I started with, was kind of what she was interested in. Hmm. So she lent me Gravitation Doujinshi and... <laughs> oh, boy. All of, yeah, oh, boy, that was, like... That was a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite a really quite a level to start out at. <laughs> yeah, yeah fish in the deep end, you could say. And so sort of when we found new anime and we get into it together, we kind of discuss, you know, our pairings. Like early on, I was, we had uh, Daisuke and Dark from DN Angel. Oh, okay. And Toya and Yukito from Card Cap Sakura. Mm. But then I kind of branched off and I started finding my own things and that's when I found Yuri and I watched Aoi Hana, which I love still. And then it's kind of just developed over the years into a variety of just generic LGBT related stuff that kind of more explores relationships. Of mm. course, I love, I love the smutty stuff as well because <laughs> I got started on gravitation but i think my favorite ones are yuri and ice love stage but also flip flappers which is like a yuri that came out last year and wandering sun which is really good and that's about sort of kids trying to work out their genders oh interesting so yeah and even even this season there's like not so many yuri anime per se but easily could be made yuri like ramen daisuki koizumi san is about a girl who loves ramen but another girl in her class is like obsessed with her and she's like i love cute girls i want to be with you and she kind of stalks her <laughs> <laughs> so it's not exactly yuri but it's it's definitely yuri you can easily make it so <laughs> oh yeah we we'll just mm -hmm. think you can easily make Naruto Sasuke, yaoi. Yeah. Exactly. They just make it so easy, man. <laughs> they do make it so easy. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of how I've developed over the last 11, 12 years. Amateur. <laughs> I know. I am not, I'm a baby compared to you. That sounds offensive. <laughs> Why would you think that? All right, let's move on to Tara and she can tell us her sordid tale. Okay, so I first was introduced into Fujoshi in college. Stacy, who was already a master at that time, and my friend <laughs> Kristen are the ones who introduced me to it. My gateway BL has always been Gravitation. Still one of my favorites. I love BL mainly because I really enjoy the characters. I love how crazy and outrageous they are and how fun they are. One of my other all-time favorites is Junjo Romantica, mm -hmm. which really if you think mm -hmm. about it, it's a little obscene. Um, <laughs> but I still love the way the younger brother reacts even if he does get molested in the first episode. It's but, a common theme. <laughs> yeah, that is unfortunately a common thing, but we could go into that. Yeah. That's a whole nother topic for a different time. Yeah. <laughs> However, out of all my anime watching, BL is probably just a small part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I do still enjoy it, and I still love the ones with the majorly outrageous characters. They're the ones that make me laugh, and I really, really appreciate the ones that aren't actually BL, but they really imply. <laughs> like BL High School, <laughs> where the opening yeah. scenes of every episode make it sound so obscene and they are really innocent <laughs> gaku in heaven is the show's name <laughs> yes uh, yeah. yes yeah i've actually got the manga for gaku in heaven right next to me right <laughs> ah. <laughs> i piled up all my all my bl manga <laughs> but that one i love where they're like don't touch it you're gonna dirty it's like but i won't but it's new don't touch it <laughs> 
And then you discover that they're talking about teacups yeah. or something else that was not <laughs> lewd, but they totally made you want to think that it was lewd. And also the very fact that, I don't remember if that was the name, if it was like Bright, no, it was Bright, Bright Light, Light High, High School, School. Uh, abbreviated to BL. <laughs> it's like, okay, obviously they, uh, a wink and a nod there to what they're doing. Yeah, those are still my favorite type of series. <laughs> the uh, teasers. <laughs> Tara likes being teased. <laughs> uh, Kyo Karamaho oh. is another one that there's a lot of teas. Mm-hmm. Do you have any, like, shows where they're, it's not BL, but you have pairings that you like that are BL from those shows? Okay, so another one of my major uh, genres I love is shonen. Hmm. Especially mm-hmm. sports shonen. Mm-hmm. Which often yeah. have a ton <laughs> of male characters. <laughs> Prince of Tennis, mm-hmm. horrible show. I love it. You could pair them off till the like, end of eternity and you still would not run out of pairs. Endlessly shippable shonen. <laughs> It's a whole shipyard. <laughs> yep. Yes, yeah, so if you go to the doujinshi shops in Japan, you will see huge sections that are, these are jump properties, and that's like half the store. This wall is Prince of Tennis only. Yes, and then they're divided up by, these are all the ships. This is this ship. This is that ship. This is that. So you can find exactly which ones you're looking for. Of course, if you're into rare pairs, you may not always find what you're looking for. Wah, wah. So Stacy, what about you? Yes. Okay, so me, we have to go back to the year 1996. Mukashi, mukashi. Translator's note. Mukashi, mukashi means long ago. <laughs> I was a young girl in middle school. I had a Aww. friend. Yeah. For this, I have to go back all the way to when I got into anime itself because the two things, becoming otaku and becoming fujoshi, were nearly simultaneous. Mm-hmm. So I had yep. a friend who was watching Sailor Moon and she would talk about it all the time, like drawing pictures in class and telling me about different things. And then like, I'm actually like, okay, come on. You got to show me this show because I have to see, you know, what it's about. You know, you think it's really great and boy, what's so great about it? It's just some cartoon, right? So I did eventually get a tape from her because back in that day, it was VHS tapes off of TV. That is how we got the shows. We didn't just download them, kids. So I got a tape of Sailor Moon from her and uh, it wasn't the beginning part of the series. It was maybe 30 or so episodes in it was the first tape I was able to get from her because she had a couple of younger sisters and they were both watching the show too. So she said, well, they're watching the other tapes right now, so I can let you borrow this one. So I watched Sailor Moon and I'm like, you know, blown away, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure anyone who's getting into anime knows you just feel it's just something different than what you've ever seen before, basically. And another part of my history is that I tend to be, I like the bad boys. I like the villains of the show. So watching this part of Sailor Moon in the first season, there was a character that I found really intriguing. It was one of the villains. And as I thought at the time, her her name was Zoisite, and she was like this badass bitch doing what she wants and just messing with the heroes all the time. And another cool part that I thought is like, oh, and she also had this villain boyfriend, which I thought was really neat. It's like sometimes the villains are just like, oh, you know, they're just the villains. They don't have any lives. They're not, you know, meant to be anything more than just a foil for the heroes. But, you know, seeing a, like a villain in a relationship, it was like, it was a cool thing. It was like, wow, they actually have some development going on here. So I started getting into this, what I thought at the time, <laughs> this, you know, baddest bitch and her cool boyfriend. And then also around this same time, I started getting the internet and I started going on looking at my new obsession, Sailor Moon, seeing, you know, what people are doing online. I've discovered fanfics very early also. Uh, one thing that intrigued me is that I found people talking about the Japanese version of the show and how there were changes made. And one of the curious things I found, I went to one site that was by a Japanese person, but it was in English, and he was writing episode summaries for Sailor Moon. And I was looking at some of them, and I would read them, and I saw that he was talking about the character I liked, Zoisite. He would always say he, like, he did this, he did that. It's like, that's weird. Like, why? Is that a typo? But he keeps keeps typing he. And then, so yeah, for a while I wasn't sure what was going on, but then once I started reading about the edits, it turns out the character I liked was actually originally a man, a very effeminate man that was changed to a woman for the dub to cover up his homosexuality. Yes. So then it's like, okay, so these are actually two men. Hmm. Oh, Okay, well, I mean, that's cool. It's like, maybe that makes it even better somehow. (laughs) And thus, my immediate descent into Fujoshi Tra. 
trash. That wasn't even a term yet at the time. It was definitely a term when I got into it. Yes. But you're a baby. I, yeah, in comparison. So yes, I start, that's how I started. And then from there, as I kept watching other shows, you know, I sometimes just get a feeling like, you know, these, these guys should be together. I mean, it's obvious. One funny thing was that I, when I was watching Gundam Wing a couple years after mm-hmm. I got into <laughs> Sailor Moon, I watched a bit of the series and then then I started going online uh, seeing what the fan art and fan fics were and it was all like it was hero and duo like all over the place there was so much of it that I thought it would be canon (laughs) (laughs) it practically is it's like if there's this many people like writing this I mean this must be in the show and then like as I kept watching the show I was like when like when is this gonna happen when are they getting together and by the end of the series like nothing had happened like what the fuck it's like okay so sometimes ships are just created by fans and even if they're way 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 more popular than the canon pairings that doesn't make them true Gundam Wing is an interesting case because even if Official art has a lot of things where they seem to be shipping it themselves. Like there's things where the boys are all hanging over each other and putting their arms around each other. It's like, okay, I'm pretty sure it was intentional because they know there's a market for that. But unfortunately, they didn't actually put it in the show. I kind of have a split between canon ships and non-canon ships. I think it tends a bit more towards the non-canon just because, at least on the BL side, I think for straight or het shipping, I'm mostly canon pairing. But BL is mostly non-canon. Non-canon, but with, come on, total proof that they should be a couple. (laughs) (laughs) Tara mentioned Gravitation earlier, which is one of my all-time favorite, like, actual BL shows. It might might be one of the first I saw that was, like, a true BL, though. Mm, Not just a tease. Yeah. Though I did, uh, I think I did watch Fake earlier, but that was, like, it was so short. I did read the manga later, but the show was, like, two episodes. It's, like, it's just a teaser. And then other old stuff like uh what was it kizuna Mm -hmm. i did see that i barely remember it but that was an early thing that i watched that was another very short like maybe three episode oav or something but yes so that's why i consider gravitation like one of my first like big bl fandoms because it it continued it went on for a while so it wasn't just like a teaser of just a few episodes it had a full series and then a 12 volume manga and then a questionable spinoff a couple years later that the author kind of very sporadically worked on over several years and then later another spinoff that was pretty good but then it ended after uh, not too much time and then of course all the very very hardcore yaoi doujinshi that she continues to put out to this day even like a decade and a half after the series finished i do love it that the author writes her own fan fiction of her own work <laughs> Yeah, she's like, you know what? They won't let me do this <laughs> in the series, so I'm just gonna do it outside of the series. Does that make it canon? There are a couple of stories that she's written that she said, okay, this fits in in this part. The rest of it, she's like, eh, it's, uh, yeah, it was just eh, random sex. Woo! It could be happening at any time. There are non-canon pairings in her doujinshi, too, so obviously <laughs> she doesn't intend it to be canon because she didn't make those pairings in the actual story, but she does want to have them sex each other. <laughs> Sex each other, that's a word now. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'd say that's my biggest BL fandom and say it's still going today because she keeps putting out at least one doujinshi a year, sometimes two. So it's a fandom that keeps being sustained and I actually have helped translate for that series both back when the webcomic, the uh, first spinoff that I mentioned earlier, was coming out. It would come out monthly. I would screen cap the things and post them on LiveJournal. Yay, LiveJournal! Who remembers (laughs) that? And to this day, more doujinshi keep coming out. So there's still more things to translate, more things to to enjoy, really. As for more current things, uh, I'm not really a person who keeps up with current series. <laughs> I mean, I would like to use this podcast also as an excuse to watch more and read more things of the BL nature, since we can suggest things to each other, or we may do some reviews and stuff as well at a later point. Yeah, I think that's the thing, because I, I definitely keep up with the more newer stuff. I'm not as familiar with the older stuff besides Gravitation, Jojo Romantica, the usual. So yes, we'll get on the same Fujoshi page as each other eventually. Yeah. <laughs> we'll all know the same thing. So I did watch Love Stage and read the majority of the manga, though I haven't read Yay. the last volume yet. Jen, did you find the last volume? I found it. I need to order it and get it sent over. Yay! Because Jen let me like volumes one to six of Love Stage and it's like, ah, there's one more volume, but we don't have it. That's because they discontinued it. Ah. Oh. Boo. I 
it got cancelled, so they stopped publishing the last volume. Ah, oh, that sucks. At least you can get it, though. Yes. Okay, good, because I don't want it to be uh, another in the long line of unfinished series that sit on my shelf, not necessarily BL, but just manga in general. <laughs> it's like, oh, we stopped this yeah. series. I have X. Uh, thanks, Clamp. <laughs> thanks for <sighs> being, like, near the end, but then a tragedy happened and we can't finish it now. Okay. You're going to do that. Nana. Nana, yeah. I mean, Nana's annoying for many reasons, but being unfinished is another one. It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's like a soap opera type thing that, that you don't want to get sucked into, but then you kind of do. And then it's like, well, the author never finished it. So, eh. And then the last volume that is out is like the biggest downer ever. It's like, oh, that's how it ends then now. Great. Because there's no continuation and we just end with everyone being sad. That's what happened with the DN Angel manga was it got up to volume 15 and then went on indefinite hiatus. Uh, like 10 years. And it's still on hiatus. Boo. Yeah. Not that they're publishing it in English anyway, because it was originally translated by Tokyo Pop, who went... Oh, Tokyo Pop. That brings me back to gravitation. <laughs> <laughs> The interesting translation choices that they made with that series, uh, yeah. I should get back to the thing I was doing on Tumblr like over a year ago where I was criticizing their translation heavily for mistakes made and dumb references that they inserted, but eh, I kind of got off that project, but I would like to finish it eventually. But yeah, there were times when it's like, how could you mess that up? This is obvious. That's not, that's not even the character who's talking and bleh. It was a different time. Yeah. It was the freewheeling early aughts when Tokyo Pop was doing their thing. All right. To finish off our introductions, one last question for the whole group. What would you call your true OTP, your one true pairing, if you had to pick any over all others? I don't know if I can even answer this question, what would you say? Jen, do you have an answer? Uh, or you can give a couple because I'll probably do the same thing. Well, actually, I have the opposite problem because I I love BL, I love Yuri, but when it comes down to it, I'm not a rabid fan girl who really has an OTP. Uh. I just watch things and feel like, you know, the moe, moe. like the burning sensation of, oh my god. That's so fucking cute! Ah! <laughs> ah! So I tend to kind of fall more towards official couples. Oh, okay. So definitely, I think thinking about it, the two that jumped out at me that I'm always like, oh, that's so cute, has to be Toya and Yuki from Kagap Sakura. Mm -hmm. And then more recently, Victor and Yuri from Yuri ah. and Ice. Makes me so happy. Happy fangirl tingles. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, those would have, probably have to be my OTP. Okay. What about you, Tara? Do you have one pairing that just stands above all else as like, ugh, I would die for this pairing, oh my god. No. There is no, no pairing <laughs> I would die for. Man! Okay, but what about one that gives you very happy, happy feelings? Almost any one of them in Junja Romantica. Ah. But I do love the teacher in this Junja. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, for Junja Romantica, <laughs> I do agree on that. I'm usually not into a large age gap, but in Junja Romantica, Romantica, it's like, okay, yeah, I do like the one with the younger guy and the older guy, even if it makes me feel wrong. That's where you're rotten. Yes, I'm filthy, rotten, Fujoshi trash. <laughs> For me, see, the thing is, like, I am primarily a shipper. Like, I will find specific pairings that I love, and that's what I go for, rather than just, like, general. So, I guess I'll divide it up to two different things. For a canon pairing, I will say Eri and Shuichi from Gravitation as my number one. And if we go non-canon, I have to go with my current obsession of the last approximately year and a half of Black and Zamasu from Dragon Ball. Actually, despite being a Fujoshi for so many years and a Dragon Ball fan for almost the same number of years, I haven't actually been into Dragon Ball Yaoi for the most part until last year, pretty much, because <laughs> there just wasn't pairings that I felt spoke to me. <laughs> but now I'm like, oh baby, I <laughs> ship it. Wait, if nothing spoke to you till now, what's your Dragon Ball fan fiction been about for the last 20 years? Well, for Dragon Ball specifically, I only had one previous Dragon Ball fan fiction before I started writing more recently about my new favorite ship. The previous Dragon Ball fanfic I wrote was about a straight canon pairing. Uh. Because even though we joke about it, I still haven't actually read any of our fan fiction. I'm sorry. You don't have to. <laughs> oh. It's more embarrassing for you to read them than... <laughs> no, we should totally do that for the podcast. No. Tara and I should read, read them on it air. and then talk about it and then review them. We could act it out. Oh, no. 
No, I don't want that. <laughs> I have shame. We're for Joshi. We all have shame. Anyway, as you mentioned, I have been writing fanfics for 20 years. Only the previous Dragon Ball one I mentioned, there was only one about a straight pairing. All the rest have been filthy Fujoshi trash, <laughs> BL stuff. The majority non-canon pairings. All right, that will wrap us up for this time. Be sure to check us out in the future. For now, you can find our other shows on Annie Bros Creative. We have a website at anniebroscreative.com. You can also find it on Twitter and on Facebook. Thanks for listening. See you next time.